an orphanage in northern India. Nearly all the babies placed here are girls. These are the lucky ones. They're alive. Over the past 20 years in India, about 10 million female fetuses have been aborted. Culturally, in some parts of the world, boys are preferred. But well, actually, uh, it's biologically, in terms of the ecosystem, it should not be encouraged uh, because it also disturbs the parity. An old tradition has proved to be disastrous for Indian girls. Poor families can seldom pay the high dowries demanded when they get married. Men cost families less, and in this patriarchal society, they count as breadwinners. Everyone wants a son. You hear that everywhere. My prosperity depends on having a son. It's okay to have two girls, but if a third's coming, you have to consider abortion. The result? In some regions, there are just 100 girls for every 120 boys. There's often a serious imbalance in cities as well. The middle classes want fewer children, so they select the sex of their children before birth. There must be a recognition that this is happening, and you must then put in place a policy environment that then ensures that we can have this kind of conversation. You know, and society can talk about it, and we can talk about it in small groups, formally and informally. That's how, that's how, that's how change comes to society. Since 1994, sex-selective abortions have been banned in India. But in reality, ultrasound technology is raising the abortion rate. To date, laws have been ineffectual in changing people's values. In China, wrong incentives, among them the one-child policy, have even increased the surplus of men. If their first child is a girl, families are allowed to have another. But often, nothing's left to chance with a second, because in China, it's men who continue the family line. Every year, over a million men fail to find wives. They try their luck on contact forums. In rural areas, trafficking in women is ubiquitous. In some southern provinces, women are even smuggled in from Vietnam. I think now with education, with sensitivities around empowerment, around education, all that is beginning to disappear because once a girl can go to school, she can be empowered, she can also be economically useful to a, to a family. There are some positive examples. South Korea has succeeded in changing the image of women in the country through education. The surplus of men there has been shrinking since the mid-1990s. But even then, South Korea was better off economically than China and India are today. India and China can't afford to wait much longer. They have to change this traditional mindset, because without mothers, the patriarchy will not be able to produce the next generation.